Hello, this is Your Evil Twin, welcoming you back to Let's Play Quantum Break. What led you to the swimming hall? Oh, Will said there was something important in his briefcase. All I found was a key with Bradbury Swimming Hall on the chain. Only lead we had. I guess this is it. This building's been shut down for years. Perfect place to hide something you don't want found. I think it's time you tell me what you know. I know your brother built the one thing that can stop the fracture. I know we're meant to find it, and I know Monarch doesn't want us to. And yet you're wearing their uniform. I like the way their pants fit. Yeah, I bet you like the paycheck too. Try to create a cover to gather information. You've known about this for a few hours. I've been preparing for it for most of my life. You weren't aware that William owned the place? There's a lot I didn't know about Will. We need to find your brother's countermeasure. And fast. Things will get worse as the fracture progresses. And Monarch will be turning Riverport over looking for you. Riverport Public Pool Restoration Project. Due to open 1981. Well, this place has been abandoned for at least 35 years, maybe even 40 years. They might have announced that restoration project back in the 70s. Never actually went ahead. Wow. Jack, that key you got from Will's briefcase. The key doesn't fit. Huh, that's funny. Would have expected the key to be for the front door. Okay. I'm gonna find another way in. Make it quick. I'll keep a lookout for unwanted company. Any ideas how to get inside? The whole building's falling apart. There's gotta be an opening somewhere. Right, before we go look around, let's check how Amy is doing. Are you okay? I just checked the news reports and Monarch is being heralded as a hero. No, I'm not okay. Because if I had just refused to make that confession... Then you'd be dead. Somebody else would have done it. Doesn't make it easier. If we look around, we can see a little bit of the city of Riverport, as well as a huge Nissan Altima billboard. And if we head over here, towards this unkempt lawn area... Can you find a way in, Jack? We shouldn't stay out here. There's no way in over here. That might be so, but if we use time vision, we can reveal that there is a chronon source up there. So as well as trying to find a way into the building, we should be looking for a way to get onto that roof. Oh look, even more Nissan advertisements. And one for a Microsoft Lumia phone. One nice detail, over there the sky is blue with white puffy clouds, the uh, weather's quite nice in Riverport at the moment, but there are grey storm clouds moving in over Bradbury Swimming Hall, and also there's this overpass looming over the place. I think it generates a bit of an ominous atmosphere, though uh, it's quite subtle. This is weird. I could swear this is the same cab I was in when I came to the university. It's a taxi. They all look the same, don't they? I'll check the license plate on my phone and see if anything comes up, but... I mean, it's a long shot. Hmm. I did think it was funny that the gates of this place were already open. Bev didn't have to stop the van for us to get out and open them. And this taxi proves it. We're not the first people to get here. Also, another funny thing, this taxi is a Nissan Zero Mission car, and they've gone and put it right in front of a Nissan billboard. Not exactly subtle advertising. Now, if we look up, we can find some more interesting graffiti. I wonder how the graffiti artists managed to get up there. Can we get up there the same way? Maybe that's a clue on how to get inside. If we use time vision, there's a region of unstable time here. Hmm. 
So we've just rewound time to before the graffiti was painted. Time when the dumpster was pulled out. I don't really see why we couldn't have just pulled out the dumpster and climbed on it. I guess Jack finds it easier to reverse the arrow of time and mess with the laws of entropy and causality than to use his muscles and do a bit of manual labour. Nailed it. That's quite a tricky jump, that. Hey, I think I found a way in. Now, the moment we step inside, there's a chronon source right here. Hey, there we go. Now, we mustn't forget about that other chronon source we saw earlier. There's an open window over there that we can use to climb out onto the roof. Whoa. Hey, I just looked up the license plate of the cab parked over there. It belongs to somebody named Nick Marsters. Nick Marsters? <laughs> That's the name of one of the witnesses we picked up from the university. Yeah, I recognized his picture. I saw him there. But how did his cab get here? Do you think Monarch took it? It's not possible. I've been monitoring monitor activities this whole time. I honestly don't know. Yeah. All right. What is it? There were others taken from the university. Friends of mine. What happened to them? Should be released by now. Monarch convinced them the same thing they convinced everybody else. That what Monarch did at the university was necessary to protect them from... Stutters aren't going away. There's a lot of objects to interact with in here. Will had used the building to hide away his personal items. Ah, there's a time echo of Will. We need to keep our contact limited from this point forward. forward. I'll find I'll you find when the countermeasure is complete. complete. Come on, Will. What did you want me to find here? What the hell were you doing here, brother? Time travel experiments with rats? Schrodinger, first chrononaut. Sure looks like it. Okay, May 17th, 1998. This is William Joyce, and I'm about to conduct the first animal test of the machine prototype using my trusty pet mouse, Schrodinger, in order... Wait. He's gone. Where'd he go? Shit. Come on, Schrodinger. Come to Willie. Come on, come on, come on. You're okay. You're all right. You're all right. Okay, finally, we're sending Schrodinger into the machine clockwise through the corridor, which will send him five minutes into the future, meaning he will reemerge exactly five minutes after he enters the machine. It has now been three minutes. No sign of Schrodinger. This is a very good sign. Two minutes to go. Okay, so, yeah. Turns out he just kind of sat inside the corridor for five minutes, took a shit on the tubing. This reveals a very clear flaw in my test. My mouse is an idiot. Okay, the machine is warming up again. Should be able to activate test number two in around about five minutes and 15 seconds. It's now clear the only quantifiable test will be travel to the past. The machine is now calibrated to send Schrodinger five minutes into the past, which means that he will now be traveling counterclockwise through the corridor, and when he comes out the other 
Holy shit. Holy shit, it worked. This, this is clear proof that it's... Uh, what, I'm, what I'm now looking at is a future version of the same mouse that has successfully traveled five minutes into the past. Schrodinger, meet future you. Ow, that fucker bit me. $12,000 moving bill. You must have hauled a lot more to this place than just some old boxes. Closer to $13,000, actually. 17 truckloads over the course of 17 days. Contents are confidential. Packed boxes not to be inspected. You owned this place since 1999? Why didn't you tell me, Will? Along with the deed to Bradbury Swimming Pool, there's this letter from Alison Cunningham, Will's attorney and friend. She's made sure the purchase can't be traced back to Will's research grant. She trusts that he knows what's best for him, but she can't pretend that she's not concerned. His career's been showing so much promise, but his recent actions feel like a drastic turn in a direction she can't begin to understand. And she knows that Jack is worried about Will, even if he doesn't know how to show it. No wonder you are always coming up with crazy shit. Yep, that's some weed. And an ultraviolet lamp. Will was growing his own weed. Now over here, there's a radio. So let's have a listen to the news and check out the latest monarch propaganda. Hello, Riverport. Teresa Sedmak here, filling in for Bobby Radford. About to brighten your day with some good news. The victims wounded during the terrorist attack on Riverport University are being treated in the Monarch Solutions Medical Center in downtown Riverport, and the hospital has released a statement saying they are all now stable and out of critical condition. I'm sure they are thankful for all your good thoughts and prayers. As for those who didn't survive the attack, we still don't have a final death toll, but we do know that most of the dead are security personnel from Monarch Solutions, whose quick action saved countless civilian lives at the cost of their own. While Jack Joyce, the terrorist responsible for the carnage, is still at large, authorities are saying that he is believed to not have left Riverport, and thanks to a number of solid leads, his capture is imminent. Hmm. Thoughts and prayers indeed. Interesting note that there's a Monarch Solutions Medical Center so as well as being a tech company, and providing security services, Monarch does healthcare as well. Interesting bit of music on the radio. The last radio we found made me think Teresa Sedmak was just going to put on classical music. This is a song named What If, by a little known Finnish singer named Paula Frey. She did the song back in 2011, and uploaded it to YouTube in 2013. She just happened to be friends with someone at Remedy. They were looking for a few songs to place in the game, so uh, one of them sent the others a link to her song. Any luck in there? Working on it. Now Will wanted Jack to come to this place. And just a little while ago, Jack wanted to take Beth's van and do things on his own. So although Beth and Amy have both been helpful, I think it's in keeping with Jack's character that we have him look around on his own for a bit. Let's try this again. Nope. July 4th, 2010. The hell is this? I'm addressing this video to you. You told me to stay away from my workshop, but I couldn't just leave it there. I went back to get it, and the entire place is a disaster zone. The countermeasure, gone, taken, shit. Safe, empty. I just need to know you have it, because if it falls into the wrong hands, its power is immeasurable. Our future, our entire lives depend on it. This can't all be for nothing. You know where to find me. Please, hurry. The video made it clear that he'd been working with Beth in the past. 
made me wonder what else she was hiding. Hmm. I think it's time to open the door and confront Beth about it. Hey, Jack. You gonna unlock this door for us? Yeah, just hold on. All right, let's take a look around. Down here. <sighs> nice work. I already did. Now how about you tell me how you know Will? I've never met your brother. I find that hard to believe, considering the video I just watched. What are you talking about, Jack? See for yourself. It's in the next room. That confrontation only happens if you go and watch the video before letting Beth and Amy in. And what's Amy looking at? She's got something on her fingers. She's wiping it off on her jeans. Did you find something? Paint. And it's still wet. I think someone was here recently, Jack. You may want to stay here until we make sure it's safe. Yeah, I think you're right. So whoever left the taxi outside, they ain't gotten here. Hopefully they haven't messed with whatever we're looking for. This note... It's directed... at me. July 4th, 2010. Beth Wilder, I'm addressing this video to you. You told me to stay away from my workshop, but I couldn't just leave it there. I went back to get it. And the entire place is a disaster zone. The countermeasure, gone. Taken. Shit. What the... Safe. Empty. I just need to know you have it. Because if it falls into the wrong hands, its power is immeasurable. Our future, our entire lives depend on it. This can't all be for nothing. You know where to find me. Please, hurry. 2010. Holy shit. What was he talking about? He recorded that for me in 2010? What the fuck? And he said the countermeasure's gone? It's not good. We need to figure this out. Let's keep looking. Help me push this out of the way. Hey Amy, have you got anything to say about any of that? Nope. Okay then. I need help moving this. <clears throat> Jack. Your brother addressed that video to me, but I've never met him before in my life. Well, it sounded like he thought you had his countermeasure. I wish, but he said it was stolen on July 4th, 2010. Somebody took it. <clears throat> but I'm hoping this place will help us figure out who. I'll give you the honor of pressing the button. Before we press the button, we can use Jack's time sensors to detect another chronon source. Now in previous parts, the game trained us to follow electrical cables. And while this cable doesn't lead us to any devices we need to activate, it does lead us straight to the chronon source. There it is. What do we got here? Why, we've got another Chronon source, that's what. Which means that we've now got seven upgrade points. So I'm going to max out Jack's time shield power. The increased power upgrade costs six upgrade points, makes it last longer and have a larger radius. With that done, 
Let's head back to the important looking red button. Is that? Yeah, I think so. The second time machine. This changes everything. If we can get this thing working, then we don't need that countermeasure. We can change everything. What if we stop the fracture from ever happening in the first place? We can go back to yesterday, undo everything in the past before it happens. Nobody dies. Paul doesn't go through the machine. Monarch never exists. I mean, the fracture never occurs. Jack, wait. Let's think this through. That's not how it... I can go into the machine like Paul did at the university. I helped them set it up. Then we activate the core, put the corridor in place, and set the date. I can do it, Beth. I'm not so sure we can do this without the countermeasure. But you're right. We'll need the machine. Right. Let's start with the core. Um... Explanation? Anybody? I saw some kind of visions of this machine in his workshop. He must have hit it here. Feel free to fill me in. Anytime now. Okay, core controls. Where are they? We could be a dick and ignore Amy, but let's fill her in on what's going on. Hey, Amy. What is this? I don't think you'd believe me. Uh, in the past two hours, I've learned that Monarch is a secret paramilitary. It's a time machine. Okay. I'll compartmentalize that with everything else that shouldn't make sense. We should help Jack find the core controls. Yeah, yeah. Okay. These schematics are all in Will's writing. He did all of this. Built everything. Monarch was made aware of its existence shortly after it was completed. In 1999. 1999. They believe it was destroyed shortly after. I imagine Will wanted to keep it that way. The schematics for the countermeasure spanned 11 years, 1999 to 2010. In itself, that wasn't strange. But the guy built a working time machine in two. Huh. So that shape we saw on the graffiti outside is the countermeasure. Anybody check out this map? It looks like he labeled where everything is. Ah, that's helpful, Amy. Now, there's an old computer here running a rather old version of Windows, but Will was still using it. He left the email client open, and we can have a read of the emails he was sending to Beth Wilder. He sent an email just a few days ago, but the emails stretch all the way back to 2010, the day after he left that videotape for Beth. He was emailing to say, Where are you? The countermeasure is gone. What happened? Call me immediately. A bit later the same day, he emailed to say, Where are you? Have you taken it? It's not safe in the open. You don't understand the power of this device. I dialed the number you gave me in case of emergency, so you aren't answering. What is going on? And he kept emailing for a few days, and then a month later he emailed to say, The number you gave me is now disconnected. Where are you? And then he tried again a few months later, and then a year later. And then a year after that, he emailed to say, I've given up hope that you're still listening. I'm not sure why I'm writing this. Maybe to get some closure. You've changed the course of my life when you entered it. I spent over a decade devoted to your cause. I sacrificed every relationship I had, pushed away everyone I love, all in the name of a lie. There is no threat coming, there never was. I have to force myself to believe this, it's the only way to move on. It's the only way to pick up the pieces and start over, this is goodbye. Then four years later, in 2016, he emailed again and said, I've seen it, the cause of the fracture exists. It's here. Are you still out there? And then a few days later, yesterday in fact, he sent one last email. Beth, the time has arrived. It's here. Everything you warned me about is about to come to fruition. Please give me a sign that you're still out there. I'll put my mind at ease. 
Tell me you have the countermeasure. I'm losing my mind over here. I spent years trying to convince myself that you were wrong all this time, then I built the countermeasure for nothing. I tried to move on, pick up the pieces, but now I've seen the proof. All Serene brought me in to advise on an experiment at the university. They've built it. They've built another time machine, almost an exact replica of my own design, but with key flaws in the calculations, just like you said. If they activate this machine, then the fracture will occur. How is this possible? How have they followed my design so closely? Somebody's been watching me all this time, haven't they? Somebody's orchestrating this, all of it. I'm being followed. At first I thought it was paranoia, but it's true. A man has been watching my every move. I secretly took his photo, ran a search. His name is Liam Burke. He works for a security division of Monarch Solutions. I first noticed it weeks ago, but this could have been going on for years. What does he want? What does he know? How is he connected to this? I need answers. I don't know who I can trust anymore. I don't know who else is involved, what they want, why. I need to hear from you. I need to know that I'm not alone in all of this. If what you told me once is true, then the onset of the fracture may be inevitable, but I can't simply stand by and allow it to happen. Not until I know the countermeasure is safe. And yeah, later that night, he went to the university with a gun and tried to stop Paul from running the experiment. And then ended up getting killed by future Paul. Hey Jack, you might want to check out this ah, that means Beth's actually gone down underneath the middle of the machine. Yep, there she is. None of these consoles even look like they're from the 21st century. The guy sure as hell know how to make his life more complicated. So Beth is now waiting next to where we need to go, but we might as well still go take a look at that map that Amy mentioned. Okay. Gotta figure out where to start. Where are the core controls? There's a newspaper clipping here. Will received a massive research grant in 1997. He'd successfully built the time machine by 1999. But the results scared him. He never told a soul. Will's proposed research project led to him obtaining the highly prestigious Harold Steinberg Fund, with an estimated value of $150,000. Apparently, Dr. Joyce and Dr. Meyer became household names when their paper on the proposed existence of a chronon field became one of the most hotly debated theories in the quantum physics community. <laughs> Core access. You said Will built a countermeasure. What makes you so sure this isn't it? The time machine? He said the countermeasure was stolen. But the machine is still here. Mm, yeah, that's certainly a good point. Hey, it looks like I can reset the core from here. Are you sure you know what you're doing there? No clue. But I, I did help Paul set up the machine at the university. Which then caused the fracture. Look, Will knew the calculations were wrong. Hoping that means he knew what he was doing here. This is what Will leading us to. We have to test it. The core. That's what we set up first. This could actually be the key to finding the countermeasure. We'll see. It's still resetting. The core is reset. We need to activate it from the control booth. The controls are up here, according to the monitor. It's just like the university time machine, when we had to push a lever to initiate the chronon conduit and create the artificial black hole. Here goes nothing. Oh, it's just the formation of an artificial quantum it singularity. Worked. It actually worked. Okay, we activate the corridor next. Okay, there is no way that thing should be exposed like that. 
This is gonna work. It has to. You guys aren't actually planning to use this machine, are you? So, I guess you're not at all concerned that one guy jerry-rigged this entire thing together? Because I think I literally see duct tape. Okay, no, this is a great idea. Yeah, no way that this is gonna backfire. Don't worry. We'll get this working. Core. Wait. Monarch said what they stole from the university was some kind of core. It's... The core for a time machine. We're not the only ones who have one. Christ. What are they planning to do with it? Serene's plans are focused on the future, not the past. But to succeed, he needs absolute control. A time machine is control. Well, there's a line between control and playing God. And this crosses it by a long shot. This is insane. There's a light blinking here. Might be what you're looking for. Now, before we activate the time corridor, there are still a couple of collectibles for us to get. Find anything back here? No, nothing I can make sense of. Here we can find Will's draft for a presentation that he wrote, right before he turned on the time machine. Back when it was in his workshop that became Ground Zero. A Civilian's Guide to Time Travel, cliche working title, by William Joyce. Open with a zinger. Shredding a cat joke? Note. Find appropriate accompanying cat photo. Note. No cat photo. No signs explained here. Marketing bullshit. Time machine works. Implications limitless. Facts dumbed down for the mouth breathers who will inevitably want to invest. Purpose of guide, to explain to mouth breathers how the machine works and why. Note: Proofread and delete all mouth breather references. Include gratuities for research grant. Sucking ass, community and investors. Note: Also thank Jack for his patience. Now that this is over, I promise to be there for him. Note: Too personal. Basic overview of time machine. Parts. Compare a corridor to donut in shape to explain. Note: Add joke. You don't want to eat this donut, or your body will suffer terminal chronon saturation, leading to your slow but inevitable death. Note: Cut joke. Disturbing. Time travel is tied to a rotating black hole core. Note: Explain the core first. Note: Fuck it. Just compare the core to a car engine. Note: Look up info on car engines. Examples of how time travel works. In 1999, a time machine core is first activated. The time machine is located on an island. In 2000, the same time machine with the same core is moved to a circus tent. Teddy enters time machine in 1999 and travels to 2000. He exits the time machine and is in a circus tent. No, use better examples. No circus tent. Teddy cannot travel to a time before 1999, because the core was not active. We'll bang my goddamn head against the wall every time somebody uses the example of not being able to go back and kill Hitler to try to sound clever or funny. A dinosaur joke though? Note, explain you can't go back and see dinosaurs. Fucking sucks. Should not be able to change the past. Any attempt to change things was always part of the chain of events in the first place. Already happened. Explain Novikov's self-consistency principle until heads go pop. Metaphor to explain closed loops. Time is an egg. You can move the egg, but no matter where you move it, the same chicken will hatch. No. Terrible example. Plus you could just eat the fucking egg. An egg is sitting on the table. You leave the room, come back, and the egg is broken on the floor. You aren't sure how this happened, but it saddens you. The egg was important to you because and certain reason that makes sense here later. You travel to the past to prevent the egg from breaking. When you arrive in the past, you rush over to the table, accidentally bump it, the egg falls and breaks. You caused the very thing you tried to prevent. Closed loops. Why the hell do all my examples end up being about eggs? No, replace egg with something else. So Will's machine works the exact same way as the university time machine. It even has similar controls for the core's chronon conduit and activating the corridor and setting the date. Although young Paul Serene was in charge of Project Promenade, 
The lead consultant was Monarch's Dr. Kim, and it seems like he just ripped off the design of Will's machine. No one at the university or at Monarch figured out how to build a time machine. They just stole Will's design. It's no wonder they screwed up the calculations. They were reverse engineering the whole thing. That was the last Chronon source for this part of the game. And there's just one more narrative object for us to take a look at. It's a newspaper clipping about the death of Jack and Will's parents, Anthony and Catherine Joyce. Catherine Joyce, who was driving, lost control of their car after a collision with another vehicle and crashed into a utility pole. The other car left the scene of the accident. They were prominent members of the community, recognised for their charity efforts, particularly the Riverport Multiple Sclerosis Walk they organised every year since 1993. It mentions that the couple left behind two children, promising young physicist Dr William Joyce and Jack Joyce still underage. It's worth noting that this article is from December 1999, almost a year after Will completed the time machine. Will ended up becoming Jack's legal guardian, but he didn't do a very good job. He somehow knew the fracture was going to happen, and ended up completely focused on building the countermeasure, rather than being a parental figure. The corridor. It's key activated. Will's key. in a trunk of his goddamn car. <laughs> That's my brother in a nutshell. That didn't sound good. Fuck. Let's just hope it still works. Our objective just updated to use the time machine to travel back in time. Woohoo! That's a lot to take in. Isn't it? Well, I stopped trying to make sense of all this around the time that you started teleporting. Yeah, still trying to figure that one out myself. I think we're ready. Wait, we're actually gonna run this thing? Really? Are you sure that it... This isn't exactly an easy bake oven. Maybe we should start by finding the instruction manual? You honestly think that's gonna help? Probably not, which is all the more reason to avoid this. I mean, have you ever seen the movie The Fly? I do not want to be the Jeff Goldblum of this story. This console says date input. I'm guessing this is it over here. Okay, it's perfect. We've now got our own secret base, our own secret time machine, and we're going to start travelling back and forth in time. Or not? No, 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 no. What? God damn it! I don't know. We were so close. I'm going to try it again. Yeah, like hell you are. You saw what happened. Something's wrong with the machine. Well, we don't know that. You're not trained for this. Anything you do is gonna make it worse. We you can't know I'm right. Stop trying. You lost people. You're angry. I get it. But this is bigger than us. We can't fix the machine. But I might know somebody who can. Sophia Amaral. The monarch scientist. I saw her video near Ground Zero. Serene's head of Cronin Research. She'll be at the Monarch Gala tonight, but security's airtight. She'll be nearly impossible to get to. Unless I have an invite. Paul told me he expected me to meet him at that party. Something tells me that was not a friendly invitation. Jack, no. So, Paul's vision of the future was right. Jack turned up right before the gala and surrendered himself to Monarch. He's put himself in Paul's hands. 
And the only reason Jack decided to give that a go is that Paul said he'd seen the future and that he was going to see Jack later tonight. Rather nice causal loop there. The music now playing is Circles by Kate Tempest. What's funny is that the YouTube comments on this song, as well as What If by Paula Frey, are mostly comments from Quantum Break fans who went and looked up the music. An interesting thing about Will's time machine not working is that originally, in an earlier version of the story, Remedy was going to have it that there was nothing wrong with the time machine itself. But in order to use it, Jack and Beth needed a supply of chronon particles. Those particles would have been obtained in an abandoned steel mill, located a good distance away from the city of Riverport. The idea was that there was a natural time anomaly at the steel mill, which gave the place a reputation as a haunted location. This anomaly at the steel mill produced great quantities of chronons, which meant that even normal people could sometimes sense strange things, like disembodied voices, glimpses of figures where there shouldn't be any. Echoes from the past or the future, caused by the overabundance of chronon particles in the area. Monarch would have already set up a harvesting operation, and Jack and Beth would have had to work together to steal chronon containers. Ultimately, Remedy decided to scrap the steel mill location, because instead they came up with Ground Zero. Will's old workshop became the epicentre of a time anomaly that emitted chronon radiation, so there wasn't any need to also have a naturally occurring anomalous zone. Still, even though it isn't actually addressed in the game, in the world of Quantum Break, Remedy still considers those naturally occurring time anomalies to be out there, and they're responsible for many of the stories about supposedly haunted locations. The next part of the game is the second junction point. Paul Serene will need to make a decision as to what to do now that Jack has turned up on his doorstep. But before we get on to that, in the next video we're actually going to go back to the end of Act 1, and try out the other junction decision. It will be the first alternate timeline video, we'll be quickly skipping through bits of the live action episode and the whole of Act 2 to look at what things can change according to a junction decision. We'll see how things would have turned out if Paul had gone with the hardline option rather than the PR plan. I think it's good to see how much things change, and how much things stay the same, before we come to the next junction point. The biggest difference is that Jack will be teamed up with taxicab driver Nick Masters, rather than Amy, and he's got the funniest dialogue in the game, he's more of a comic relief sidekick. So be sure to join me for that, and thanks for watching!